ferritin. So I found out recently that my ferritin is low. In August it was 18, which is technically in the normal range. Um, so at first I didn't really think much about it, but I've been hearing recently that the optimal range is more like 50 to 75 or maybe even 100. So in, what ferritin is, is, it's your iron stores. So um, you have like this bank account, irons coming in, irons going out, you know, various things as a woman might affect it, such as um, your menstruation, um, pregnancy, miscarriages, all different sorts of things might affect it as a woman. Um, and then your ferritin is sort of like your, your savings account of iron. So um, it was 18 in August. Um, I went through a massive blood loss event um, with a miscarriage and uh, now I just retest it and I'm at 13. So um, I'm not noticing a lot of effects from the low ferritin. Um, people have all different sorts of reactions to having low ferritin. I've been noticing I am a little edgy, um, not really that tired. Actually I'm having um, trouble staying asleep at night. Um, you can see my skin color is a little bit off, maybe a little yellowish, and what else? I've been having dry skin, which usually have really oily skin. My lips are very chapped. You can see my lips are pale. Um, what other symptoms? But it it's generally um, best for you to have a nice healthy store of iron. So when I was in the hospital the doctor prescribed to me um, two supplements. Um, one was ferrous sulfate at very high doses and stool softener because unfortunately this really plugs you up. So I didn't really like taking those and it didn't really seem, it seemed like it was flooding my iron um, my regular iron and my ferritin um, was at 20, which was not um, after taking that for a month. So it didn't seem like I was absorbing it very well and it was hard, it was hard to remember. It was, um, I just, I just didn't like it. So I started, uh, so first I took off a month because I was worried about how much it had been flooding into my system, but then I found out later that I should have actually probably abstained from the iron for like a day or two, just get it, let it get out of my system to really get a sense of what my iron um, was, um, because it was just my iron was high, my saturation was, my saturation was high, but the actual ferritin stores were low. So I've been trying to study different forms of iron that I could take. Um, this one I found on sale at Whole Foods, so I decided to try it. Um, it is ferrous gluconate, um, 10 milligrams, and it has a bunch of herbs that goes with it. It's probably quite similar to the, uh, there's another brand that's kind of famous um, that's leaving my head at this moment, but it's probably kind of similar to that. Now, um, in my studies, I've been finding that I probably should be taking between two to five milligrams per kilo of body weight, I think it is. So at any rate, it comes out to at least 106 in elemental iron, 106 milligrams in elemental iron that you need to be taking. So this is 10 milligrams, um, so I'm going to need a lot more iron than that. And I believe they had me on about 130 of elemental iron per day on the prescription. So, um, oh, and by the way, I did talk with my doctor about getting off the iron and they okayed that, but then I wasn't really happy with how the ferritin decreased farther, so I am doing my own supplements now. Um, but it's less than what they prescribed. So then, next, 
I had already had this. This is Optimal Iron from Seeking Health. This is ferric glycinate, which I found, um, I've heard that the glycinate version is a little bit easier on your stomach, um, non-constipating, um, supposed to be absorbed pretty well. So this is one I, but it's only 10 milligrams again. So again, it doesn't go very far. Also, um, I had this one recommended by someone that was knowledgeable, and it's Gero Ironsorb Lactoferrin. And it has 18 milligrams of iron as iron protein, iron protein satinolate, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, with lactoferrin. So this is supposed to be highly absorbable and also non-constipating and not upsetting your stomach. So far, I just started taking these and they don't seem like they're terribly upsetting my stomach. I've been taking up to about 100 or 96 to 106 milligrams of these um, in different combinations. Now, there's some other cofactors that I've been reading about um, to try to help me absorb. And one of them is beef liver. Um, because the problem is these a lot of these are non hemi iron which is not as easily absorbed but this would be, have hemi iron in it but the problem is you don't know how much irons in it it's probably not enough to actually affect your iron stores another thing is reform lysine um, which that's also supposed to help absorption Vitamin C, this is a vitamin C that um, is really nice. It's a natural vitamin C. Unfortunately, it's super expensive. Um, so another one I have is this Solger Ester C, and it also has some cofactors in it that are nice, like citrus, bioflavonoids, acerola extract, rose hips, and rudin. And what I like about this is it's a non-acid vitamin C. I have problems sometimes when things are super acidic. So that hasn't been bothering me. Also, beetroot is sometimes said to help absorption. Also, B12 is important. This is a B12 I really like. It's active B12 by Seeking Health. It's 80% menthocobalamin and 20% adenocobalamin. I'm sorry, I'm totally butchering it. But anyway, it's mostly menthol version of B12, um, which is good for MTHFR, unless you don't tolerate menthols. Um, I don't have a menthol folate at the moment, um, but I have this folinic acid, which is also very good for MTHFR. Not to be confused with folic acid, it's folinic acid um, by Seeking Health. This is also very good. So these are some of the things I'm going to try and then I hope to go back to the doctor in a month and see how they're working. Some other things I've been reading about as far as absorption is um, there's a lot of controversy between the vegetarian people and the non-vegetarian people um, because typically hemi iron is absorbed better from meat, from like red meat or like dark chicken or something. Um, I'm not typically a big meat eater, so that might be part of the reason why I'm so low other than um, blood loss. Um, but uh, typically red meats can help you um, absorb iron. Also, um, there's certain foods that inhibit absorption, such as dairy. That one's super hard for me. I love dairy. Um, also, whether you have it on an empty stomach, but then it might upset your stomach. So right now, I'm doing it before my meals, um, once in the morning and once in the evening. Unfortunately, I'm having a problem with the whole dairy thing. Another, pe Some people have said something about you should alternate every other day. I'm not really sure about that. And some people have said back and forth whether non-hemi iron helps or inhibits, I'm, I'm not sure. So this is a whole experimentation process that I'll probably have to go through for a while to figure out what's going to help me improve. But these are some of my thoughts initially. 
I also want to say you should always work with a doctor on this and not um, iron can be harmful in excess so you shouldn't just think oh I'm low iron and just start supplementing without going back to the doctor because you can get your your fer ferritin too high especially if you're a guy or a woman who's no longer menstruating or various um, maybe you have a medical condition, um, you definitely don't want to be supplementing with iron unless you definitely need it. And then you also want to be highly watched. So I will probably go back to the doctor in a month and check and make sure I'm on the right track. But I feel good since this is less iron than my doctor prescribed. They had said I would need to be on it three months. I was only on it one month. So I feel good about doing this for a month and then going back to check on the status to see how my iron is absorbing. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it the same? So we'll see if my ferritin stores go up. But you definitely don't want to do this without the supervision of a doctor. And I just want to say I am not a doctor, so you should listen to your doctor before you listen to me. Um, this is just someone experimenting on their own health. Um, and part of this experimentation is because my doctors don't really seem to have a lot of knowledge about this and a lot of direction about it. They seem pretty ambivalent, whatever I want to do. So I'm trying to take my health in my own hands, but also work with a doctor. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.